So whether you're a new golfer or a bit more experienced, there's a few things we see and common mistakes in the setup that have a big influence on the swing later on. Okay, so first up, grip, how you hold the club. Um, biggest thing we see, again, I'm pretty negotiable with where people go in terms of weak, strong, um, even a bit of a mix with both hands. But one thing we really hate seeing is when people get the club on the ground, slap their hand on this way, grip, club goes through the palm, and they grab it like this. So now we get these fingers run at an angle, very, very palmy grip, looks very weak as well. One little checkpoint I always use, you would have seen this before, is if I take my last three fingers off and lift my thumb up, does the club stay there? No. So we're looking for club in the air or down here, but I tend to go in the air, lean edge very flat, grip it like you would do like a bike or a scooter. So my left wrist has got a bit of an angle in it there. And then when I come down to the ground now, I can see two, three knuckles on that left hand. Heel pad sits more on top of the grip. And if I try that little test again, three fingers off, thumb up, it sits there quite comfortably. Anything in the palm makes it really hard to hinge and move the club. It's so slow as well. Get it in your fingers a little bit more, see the knuckles, and you get a lot more speed in your swing. So another thing we see is players spine angle. Now, where they might have been a bit hunched in the past and they think they've got to go straight with the back, we get a lot of this. So really extended here, arse sticking out basically. Makes it tough to turn from this position. If you already extend here, it's very hard to add any extension in the backswing. You're better off being slightly more rounded. And then when you turn, you can extend your back in the backswing. So, not hunched, but you can be a bit more rounded with your spine angle. If you're someone that sees this sort of angle in your lower back, makes it really tough to turn. It's not going to be great for uh, moving and certainly could lead to a few injuries. So, softer spine angle, a bit more natural, and it makes it much easier to rotate. So another rotation issue comes from setup, which is players are bending their knees. So um, yeah, you hear a lot of bend your knees a bit more. Still gets thrown out there a little bit from uh, mates teaching mates. Uh, problem is, if you flex here too much and look in this sort of position, it's really, really tough to turn with your knees that flexed. If you do squat down and you bend your knees loads here, you're probably going to end up standing up to a better position anyway, which make it hard in the downswing. So not so much bent. Not locked, but I would say I'm sort of relaxed as I stand over the ball here. There's a bit of an angle. I'm definitely not sitting down, though. Again, makes it really tough to turn with that much flex in your knees. So, soft triangle in your knees, but definitely an angle. Again, makes it easier to rotate. Okay, so this is one of my all-time pet hates in the setup, and that's players lining up with their feet. So, we've got flag, middle of the screen here. And if that was on the course, it might be easy to see, but you get players, you know, looking from here, lining stuff up, doing all this sort of nonsense. And now what I'm doing, yes, my feet are aiming at the flag, but if I was to get sort of parallel with the club face, I'd be aiming to the right. This is a lot of the reason why people slice the golf ball. So I've got my feet pointing at the flag, what I think is at the flag, shoulders, yeah, great. Um, club, if it was parallel, pointing now right of the target. But when I look up, I can see the flag in relation to the club, and you'll do this at almost any level of player, is to the left of where my club's pointing. Your brain's quite smart. So what happens then is, your brain takes over and goes, I've got to hit this more left, and you swing across this way. So aiming incorrectly, because you start with your feet, is a big reason why people will slice the golf ball. Or pull it. So rather than that, and like you see on other videos, I may have done, others may have done, get behind the golf ball, pick a spot, ideally quite close to the ball. I'm going to go over that tee, or to the right of it slightly. Get your club in there first. I tend to stand well over the top of it like you might for a putt. Easier to line it up than it is from back here. Stepping in, I go right foot, but that's personal. Some might go left, depends how you want to set up after that, but build your setup around the club. Club facing there first, somewhere where you want it to start. You might be a bit more open, a bit more closed. Doesn't matter too much. Don't have to be parallel lines with your feet. You can stand closed, open. Depends on what ball flight you want. Um, I'll go fairly neutral for this one, but club in there first. Your feet will probably sort themselves out. Um, not many people get the club in there and then do that. A bit weird. Club in there first. Build your setup around that. Far away. And the final thing in this video is this.
what are you doing over the ball for that long? I'll tell you what you're probably doing is thinking about stuff you don't need to worry about. So anytime a player sets up and stays there for a very long time, lots of thoughts about internal movements possibly, um, which makes it very hard to perform. Don't mind that sort of technical thought on a lesson or in a practice session where you're trying to change stuff, but that's still over the ball for that long. You'd be thinking about a lot of stuff you don't need to worry about. Um, another thing that happens is as well, if I stay here, grip pressure tends to get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, makes it hard to move the club. Standing that static for that long, hard to even begin the backswing at all. If you watch tennis players receiving, they're not flat-footed completely still. Golf swing's a big movement coming up. Yes, we're going to be maybe a bit more balanced and not going left and right, forwards and backwards um, as much, but we're still going to move. So once you set yourself up and you picked your club, got your start point, um, this is just me, but I'm, there's a lot of movement going on here. And I pulled the trigger once I set myself. So this little trigger movement almost, where I slightly sit, makes me hit the ball um, or start my backswing at least. Now you get some players that might set up a bit more of a waggle, some sort of routine here. They might then have a little forward press or another type of trigger. Um, but keep yourself moving. There's a big dynamic movement coming up, starting from a static position. It is very tough.